you already know um damn so we really don't even have an introduction for this uh this is a conversation with mrs j hill something new but being something new we on episode what six already Lante? it's episode zero zero six shout out to my guy latte base god shout out to my guy joseph d friend aka just friend um because if we say joe we might get yeah yeah else. um <laughs> shout out to my guy joe I want y'all to know who behind the camera so just in case this shit blow up and when it do blow up y'all know who the real stars is because i'm just a guy on camera asking questions but shout out to my guys that helped me um special guest episode 006 to share regale yes I said it right. <laughs> yes you did what's um what's let's have a little bit of fun for a second what's some of the names that people call you when they introduce you tashira regal tashira regal <laughs> uh uh Tashira. Uh what? <laughs> these are the people <laughs> these are the names that they call me. So Okay. But it's Tashira Regal. You said it right. All right. Or Tashira Regal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Or just um, Tashira. You're from Baltimore. You're from over east. I am. Uh how is that? Like how is that growing up? Uh, um I didn't have the best childhood. Oh. Like far as like Baltimore just in general, it's no yeah. it wasn't a lot happening and I was just pretty much like going to school. I didn't really get uh, deep into music till I graduated, so that's really that's what really like brought me out and started going to like more events okay. and performing more. So, so you say you didn't start getting into music until you graduated? What high school or college? High school. I graduated in 2017. Okay. Oh, I graduated college late <laughs> in 2017, <laughs> and I was late. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Um. So. Damn, I don't even know where to go now. Wow. All right, so what made you want to get into music, though? Because you said you had a rough lifestyle. I kind of want to touch on that for a little bit, if we can. Like, Got you. What was some of the, and, and, and do you sing about that? Um, The stuff, well, the rough part that I've been through, no, I don't sing about it. Um. But what mainly got me into music was just like my mom and she probably wow. doesn't know it she probably watched this interview like what but <laughs> she's the main person that got me into music um because i remember like growing up me her and my older sister we would just like sing in her bedroom mm -hmm. and we would change we'd like put on mary j mariah carey uh jennifer hudson beyonce we will all be battling trying to hit the notes they hit <laughs> and it's just like we just be turned up and ever since then like my love like just got stronger and stronger and then i started like watching like beyonce documentaries and how like she made something out of nothing and mm -hmm. that's always been my dream and anybody can vouch for me that knew me since middle school um performing so yeah that pretty much was like the root of where it started and my whole family sings so yeah so your mother sings as well or is it just like recreation or is it just for fun it's well, my mom, it's, it's more so for fun, but, like, it's mainly, like, my aunts. And, like, it's like a weird gospel family. Oh. So everyone pretty much knows how to sing. Okay. Yeah. So your mom's probably would think that um, the inspiration was your aunt or something. If she if you was an actor, she she probably wouldn't, because you said she didn't know. She wouldn't know it's her. Yeah, she's the start of it. And then after that, like, every, like, Christmas or, like, Thanksgiving, my family would just come together and would just sing. And it would be so amazing. And wow. Yeah, that's pretty much where it started for me. And ever since, I would just always grow a love to just sing with other people and perform. Did you sing in, like, did you go to church when you were younger? Yes, I did. Did you sing, sing in the choir? No. No, okay. <laughs> no, no, I didn't start, I was so nervous. I was so nervous and I didn't like start performing until middle school and I, I sung in like a Christmas play. So were you always nervous like coming in, like in school and just, just how, how you were as a person? Were you always like a nervous person or a shy person? To a certain extent, like, and mainly about singing because I know like people can be like real critical. So, yeah. But like me in general, I'm not a shy person. Like I'm very like outgoing and right. fun. Goofy. I was asking that because like when you came in here just in the interview, the energy was just like. Yeah, I don't like it. Was, you know what I'm saying? Like the energy was like, hey, hello, like what's up? Like, hello. Yeah, it was just like okay. So when you say you were right. shy, I'm like, wait, what? Like why are you shy? All right, so we get we, we got there. We get the inspiration and why you started singing. So um, you go to high school and what happened in high school that made you say, I want to take this serious? Um, well, mainly because like high school, I would just do like perform like the national anthem mm. and I'll perform at like high school fairs and okay. you know, it'd be like thousands of kids there. And I would just 
and people would just be like, oh, you really can sing. And I started getting more and more comfortable. And mm. the more and more uncomfortable I got, the better I got. Right. And it was just like, I. Was, and there's so many artists that I just looked up to that inspired me. And it's nothing else that I want to do. Because it's like every time I try to branch off and think of something else that I want to do, it's like, it's like, what's the really, point? Yeah. Like, you know, like, I, that's not what I want to do. You only live once, so mm. why not? So, that's yeah, I would just. So, um, singing, and I wanted to touch on that. You said when you when you were singing in high school, even though mm -hmm. you wasn't, like, taking a series of a career just yet, you still were singing national anthems. You singing in front of, like, thousands of peoples and things like that. Uh, I'm curious to know, when you started taking it serious and you didn't, and you wasn't doing the thousands of people at those moments, did you get discouraged? Was was it ever a, a moment in time? It's like, man, and I was doing this in high school. I need the same thing, or I need the same amount right. of people. Right. Um, I do get discouraged. Uh, it it is it is pretty hard, but that's when I like I feel like I turn to other artists that's mm. way bigger than me, right. or I just try to watch their story, and I would just write write songs and prepare myself. Right. Pretty much. So maybe the, the word isn't discouraged. Like, is it? Um, it's humbling because I know, like for example, oh, when, yeah. I start, when I started hosting, right, I was hosting in college, and and the events was huge, right, and it was uh, a a lot of people, big crowds, and then when I had to come to Baltimore to start hosting, the crowds went from thousands of people to hundreds of people, and it's like, mm -hmm. damn, like I was doing thousands of people in college, I I'm, I still want to do thousands of people, right? I, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, th th do you ever see yourself being humble because it's not thousands of people? Yes. Yes, um, by me being a new artist and mm -hmm. like just starting out and only having two, pretty much two music videos right now, mm -hmm. and every view like counts to right. me, right. like everything. And we literally just had a, me and friend just had a conversation in the car. He was telling me like, if you have like ten people, it's like it feels yep. a bus or something. Mm -hmm. You said, yeah, like and every time, and if you have like what you say like two hundred, it's like a movie theater. Yep. Like everybody counts. Everybody do count and. You know, it's it's very humbling, and I'm, I appreciate everything. And I know that once I get to that point, I will remain humble, right? Because I know and, where I came from. But just like as teaching, as like a newer artist, right? You gotta um, don't let that discourage you, even when it's ten people, right? You gotta treat those ten people like it is two hundred people. Right. We gotta treat those five five people like it's a thousand people because that's just who we are as artists and performers and entertainers. Right. So it's definitely important because those five to ten people can tell five more people who will tell five more people exactly. and then it will become 200 people so definitely don't it can be discouraging sometimes but don't let it get to you and i know it's easier said than done right um so when i first when you first came in we were talking about off camera about like why you wanted to do this interview and you was like you know because you don't feel, you feel like you don't give a lot to your social media platform right. or to the people in public why don't you think you give a lot because you're not shy but is it just because you don't you didn't have the outlet to give them something or what you wanted or you just is it the right time is it timing why don't you think you give the people a lot of you that's a good question um well i don't, i really i don't know um like of course like for as far as social media i can easily go on live and right. just you know mm -hmm. but uh I don't, I really don't know. I feel like an interview is more so like someone asking me okay. questions where, you know. Live is like, we ain't ask you that. We don't care. Yeah, like, like you come watch I'm talking, okay. <laughs> I'm just talking. Like, um, or I could just like, but people, I feel like I throw little things out there, like in, like videos about my personality or something that might be funny or goofy that I find funny at least. <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like interviews, it just helps someone get to know me more as an artist, who I am as a person. Mm. Um, but yeah, I feel like my social media, I, I share certain things, but not enough. Right. Yeah. And so what do you leave in the interview? What are you hoping that people can learn from to share with Raquel? Not even just as the R&B singer, but as a person. Right. That, um, well, that I'm a like very good person, very welcoming person. I hope that I hope lots of people actually watch it and mm -hmm. then see it and then see me in person and oh, just feel cool. so comfortable to like approach me <laughs> and just talk to me because I get it a lot. People are like, yeah, I seen you here. But right. I'm like, why you ain't saying anything? Right, right. So it's like, yeah, I just hope that people take away like I'm a very friendly person. Like I'm a person. Now, you can anybody that meets you in person, I feel like they will see that. Because like just right. from the jump, like I feel like Monte seeing like, oh, she's dope as fuck. You get what I'm saying? And like just cool. And right. now let's get into, let's 
dive back into the music. I know I keep going back and forth from like Tashira or Jell the person then the artist. And I do that because I want people to know who you are, right? Mm-hmm. But um starting in twenty seventeen, what are some of the things that you've done as an artist that you're proud of from twenty seventeen to twenty twenty? Well, one of the main things um is I started getting more studio time. I started getting more comfortable with recording in the studio, um, having a different ear for music, my writing, mm. everything progressed. Uh, Let's talk about the studio time. Mm-hmm. Um, so you started getting more at first. How was it at first? Was you like, nah, I'm not going to go. Did you just have like a personal studio you was doing? Like, or you it, wasn't doing it at all? Before I graduated, I couldn't afford studio time. Okay. So, of course, once I graduated, I started working. Okay. And I was able to save my money. And all my money pretty much went to studio time. And I have I had so many songs. And then I just, like, started, like, just building it up and writing. And then eventually, like, oh, no, I want to, I wanna, like, do, like, a different style. Or I want to switch it up and do like videos and I started doing that and I recorded my first video not that long ago you know and it took me some time because like working and trying to get everything together and myself and my image and what I wanted to do photo shoots a whole bunch of stuff so yeah that's one of the main things that I feel like that changed for the better and I just started like uh like modeling and Mm -hmm. got into that so but Let's talk about the support system around that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Going into, you said you had to take some time. You just shot your first video not too long ago. You said you got serious in 2017. So that's like three years. Yeah. Um, Almost four years. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, because, you know, one of the biggest influences and one of the biggest influences in general can be social media, but also the people around us, right? Right. Let's talk about your support system on social media and around you. Mm -hmm. How was your closest friends reacting to you not, quite moving fast enough and how was you reacting to yourself looking at some of your peers or other singers making moves that you wish you could be making that you're not at that at that moment right before your first video um okay so starting back in um 2017 the friends that I had around me at that time we are no longer friends Mm -hmm. okay um because I felt like it was hating Mm -hmm. I felt like they were bringing me down I didn't feel like I had the support system I knew that my family supported me mainly my immediate family um and I started like thinking twice about the people I hang around Mm -hmm. now I hang around probably like like three or four people Mm -hmm. and they completely you know like it's encouraging they like do your thing like I'm so proud of you they share whatever I want them to share they tell people about me they help me network even if I'm not there Mm. they connect the dots for me um and the besides my family like far as like social media I am so thankful for the little fan uh, fans (laughs) I have because it's so it's so exciting to know that someone is actually like waiting like Mm. oh yeah like when are you doing this like they be pressing me more than like, when are you dropping this song? Like, when is your next right. song? And, so, I, and that's the part where I really wanted to, like, I'm curious about, because I know sometimes even me, one of my um my flaws is that, like, I can overkill, if that makes sense. So, like, sometimes yeah. my friends want to be patient. Like, you wanted to be patient. I can be like, you bullshit, and you need to be on this. You need to be on right. this. And sometimes that can force you to make decisions that you don't want to make. So that's, I was really curious. If you have a close friend that knew you could sing, that 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 probably was, like, man you taking too long or just trying to force you i wanted to how 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 was that relationship but i I guess you said you got rid of all your old friends well um well you saying like friends like that forced me to make yeah when when you might just don't when you're just not ready yet right um do you have a friend like that no i well it's not a friend (laughs) i have i Uh have I have a person around me, yes, that's, like, forcing me to, like, do stuff. Like, your time is now. Like, what you doing? <laughs> like, that'd be, like, just, like, just in my ass in general. Like, what are you doing? Like, but it's, I know it's not, like, like meant to yeah. hurt me. It's just uh-huh. to, like, push me or, like, to see what I'm going to say. Right. You know, but I do have someone that's like that in... Like, it irritates me sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it irritates me sometimes, but... Yeah, I mean, it that, definitely. We gotta be careful with because, um, you know, and that's just for me growing. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you need that that space and that time. Like you you needed that from 2017 and 2020 because now you came out how you wanted to come out. You don't have no blemish on your record because right. you came out the way you wanted to come out. Right. And sometimes as support systems, we have to understand that people journeys are their journeys. They aren't ours, right? And that's what I wanted to talk about, kind of, because I know 
I know that time had to be challenging when you had people saying, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing this. Yes. And it's like, no, I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. But, um, so now you got more studio time. How has the studio time been for your career? Like, and I asked that with saying, one of my closest friends is an R&B singer. He has his own studio. He always right. in his own studio at home. And I tell him all the time, bro, you need to go to the studio. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that the studio is just so expensive, but I know when you start paying for a studio, does it get lenient? Like, how does it work? Like, how has it, how has it been for you since you've been paying for the studio session? Well, ever since I started, like, actually recording the studio session, it does get expensive. And for me as a singer, going to, like, studios in Baltimore, everyone doesn't have the quality to record a singer. Mm. And, like, I'll record a song and remind you, I'm the only one. It's coming out of my pocket. I don't have no manager. I'm not on a label or anything. Like, everything is out of my pocket. So when I book studio time, I don't like it, you know? Wow. And I'll go to studio to studio to studio, seeing which one is best for me. And I waste a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like that's, that's could be one of the reasons why like I'm just like putting out stuff or okay. why I feel like something is now worthy to be putting out or, okay. you know, it but seems um, like even though you started taking it serious in 2017, you're <clears throat> just, you're really just starting kind of now like, right like even though you were taking it serious in 2017 it's like 2020 is really a year to really step into your artistry right that's, you know what i'm saying and um that's cool it's dope to see that right because it's like I'm, I'm curious to see where you're going to be next year right or two years from now like i'm, I'm so <laughs> curious because it's like i see the passion and the drive in you right now and it's like damn like you know what i'm saying and, and, and i keep looking up around because it's like man i I want it to be a conversation with everybody because I'm pretty sure the room can see, like we can feel it, if that makes sense, right? right. And, um, but definitely keep going studios and definitely try to find an um, a engineer that's, that you can vibe with. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and especially not somebody that's going to be a creep because you are pretty. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of creeps out here that just want some weirdo shit. Tell me about <laughs> it. <laughs> so, like, you just, Tell me about it. Right. So you definitely want somebody that can like vibe with you and, and help you grow. You know what I'm saying? Not just take your money, because that's what it seemed like. You had a lot of people that just want to take your money and get get you in and out. And yeah, cool. and just starting off, like, in 2017, I didn't know nobody. Mm. Like, nobody. Like, I'm just, oh, I got a homeboy that got a studio. Okay, let me go check him out. Don't like it. I didn't know somebody else got a studio. Don't like it. You know, and then I started trying to go to, like, bigger studios, not just, like, home studios, you right. know. And... It just ain't been working Yeah, out. it's Let's, just... What are some of your goals moving forward now? <clears throat> well, goals. Um, oh, that's a really good question. I, I really, I just know where I want to go, and I know I'm not, I'm not satisfied. Mm. Like what I, cause I'm not too sure, like exactly what I want to happen. I know that I want to, you know, be very successful. I want to like be on big stages, tours, you know. I see myself on a big screen, but mm -hmm. from from here, I really. So success really, to you is big stages as of right now, and that's okay. I'm asking. Yeah, so like success is big stages. Big big stages. Uh, how many people booked and busy? <laughs> how many people? Uh, um, as many as possible. <laughs> okay, so that's all right, and this changed. <laughs> it went from like an interview to like fucking uh, <laughs> like advice and like. You, like you gotta pay for this, right? <laughs> but nah. So um, I was gonna say, you know, in in, in Atlanta today, we own everything, like mm -hmm. honestly, and, and we control. Well, we control everything, and so like you said, as many people as possible. You can go from that. You can get that tomorrow, because right. even if, like I said, even if you can get ten people in a room, that's as many as people possible for you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? As of right now, so I don't think just my, and it's not advice. It's just. If I can help in any way, right? Um, don't wait for nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Don't right. wait for a label because the label is going to sign you off a of potential. And right. what that means is they're going to be making ten times as more you're going to be making, right? And um, and I'm not saying that all labels are like that, but right. like you can have a show tomorrow, get twenty people, that's success to you because that's as many people as possible. You know what I'm saying? For you right now, right? And then you can keep building off of that. Um, definitely get the studio with somebody that you can trust. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Keep. I think you're doing a great job at just reaching out. You got people like Joe in your corner. It's a great person. Mm -hmm. um, Joe from ATO, she's a great person. I met her yes. one time, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> and keep those people and keep showing them, keep shining your light, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what people want to, they, that's what they're they, they going to um, attract to, you know what I'm saying? Who you are as a person, not the right. singer. 
You know what I'm saying? So let's talk, let's talk about these songs that you dropped. You just dropped the video. Mm -hmm. um, what was the name of that song? The um, video, uh, the song was called Right Now. Right Now. Uh -huh. what, what, what are we talking about right now? What is it? Is it my time or is it something else? Well, no. <laughs> Come on. The song, well, the song was mainly about like you just dealing with a guy and uh -oh. he playing games uh -oh. and you like, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to cut him off. But as soon as he call you, you like, oh, yeah, let me get dressed. <laughs> and like, it's that type of song. Okay. But... Yeah, that's that's pretty much like the vibe. Of okay. It, you know? So how how much of your music are you making like from real life experiences, and how does that affect your real life experiences? All of it. Um, all the music that I write is written by me. Mm -hmm. Um, and the songs I feel like the songs that I write it's always going to be something I experience because I feel like I can connect with it more. Mm. And I try to live with the song, if that makes sense, before mm. I record it so that I can, like, you know. Experience it and feel like. Yeah, yeah, like I try to live with it. Um, but, yeah, it's mainly from my real life experiences. And I feel like it can connect with people because I'm a person and I go through the people go through the same thing I go through. Mm. So, yeah. I. That's so you much said you had starts. somebody that, um, that pushes you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm assuming that's... Um, like somebody special or no <laughs> okay all right i was just wondering because i'm about to say how does he deal with that or how does the guys that you interact with deal with when they hear that song and they know it's from real life experience like do they ever actually like is this about me no they don't <laughs> <laughs> no um i'm intuitive as a motherfucker i'll be like yo so who you make this song about right and no, i i oh god <laughs> <laughs> no no one ever no one asked me nothing like that before now like before, like when I wrote songs and I like recorded it or whatever, and I like put them out and just you know shared it on social media. People are like, is this song about me? You know, <laughs> I like when I was coming out of high school, I had a boyfriend. Mm. He's like, this song about me? No, it's not about you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's kind of like a tweet. Like you know how you be tweeting just a tweet sometimes, and mm -hmm. then somebody be like, oh, you must be talking about me. Like, nah, this is just uh, I'm tweeting in general. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's definitely about someone. Uh, recently because i wrote the song recently so okay. but i that 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 name will never be never be mentioned yeah ever ever so a uh, question i'm just like we, we're making this music you had two videos now mm -hmm. um so did you put two songs out too or well are these the only two songs that you have out or you have a whole list of songs that you got out well, these are only two songs that I have out, but okay. they're not the only two songs that I have. <laughs> I will be releasing something at the end of this year, you know, okay. um, but I have a whole bunch of songs ready. It's just the timing and mm. what I, how I want to do everything and working on a project. So, you know, it's, it's coming together. It's, it's coming, coming together. together. Hey, man, look, I'm, I'm voting for you. If I can help in any way, you know what I'm saying? I got, you got my support, um, of course, friend here. Lante Bass God. Uh, the two songs that you do have are they on iTunes as well? Or is it yes. YouTube? On every platform. It's right now in What I Do For You. Yo, curious. Man, we about to wrap up in a little bit, but I'm just curious. I'm just, mm -hmm. um, as a female or as a woman uh, making music, how has the industry been towards you? Like, I know we always hear about prejudice, like, as far as black and white, but what about, um, just far as, like, being treated in the artist industry? How, have you noticed that people don't treat you with the same amount of respect that they might treat a man or the same amount of respect that they might treat somebody that's been making music for years. How has it been treating you, honestly? Um, well, to, well, really to answer that question, I feel like I haven't, I haven't really been in the mix enough to really answer that question. Now the people like, far as like contacting me, far as like management or mm -hmm. something like that. Now I can tell you about that. Like, I feel like it's just more so like creep. Like mm -hmm. how you said, like, it's, it's not business. Like it's, I feel like it's either like you want something from me or you like, you like me mm -hmm. and you just like, you want to date me or something like, no, like it's business. Like treat me how you would treat this, this rapper. Right. Like if you trying to, you know, be my manager, like that's about the only thing that I feel like that I had so far. That's like, how do you deal off with the that wall. Though? Do you, do, do you still move forward with business by and then set your boundary or you just did it? How do you deal with it? I would, I was, I would set a boundary, but if I feel like it's like creepy, cause you know, you get a vibe from someone, you realize like they look at you a certain way mm -hmm. or, you know, but I try, I set the boundary, but if not, then I'm, I'm gone. No, <laughs> like, and, and yeah. Do. Keep doing that because a lot of times people are going to think that, okay, cool. She say this, but 
I can get in and we can, you know what I'm saying? But like, keep right. And, and keep right. that boundary there because that's what's going to set you apart. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going to really show people that you're about your business. Right. And um, that's important. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? We can't ag- ignore the elephant in the room. You know what I'm saying? A lot of women are treated differently in the industry just because people think they can manipulate them and get over them. And right. that's not true. Um, but I appreciate you. If, is there anything that we didn't speak about that you wanted to touch, touch on? No, I think we, we got everything. Yeah, we got everything? <laughs> we got everything. All right. To Shiver, Miguel, um, uh-huh. nice meeting you. Uh, we wish you the best. We wanna, I want to do this again in like a year. Cause yes. Because I feel like, I just feel like it will be, it's going to be so much different. I'm just curious to see where you're going to be at. And not even like, maybe like six months, just to see. Because I'm curious. Like I, I feel it. I, like I said, I feel the energy. I love the vibes. Um, but that's all I have, man. Make sure you tell them where to follow you on social media. Yes, uh, you can follow me on social media at I am Tashira Regal on Instagram. Twitter is Tashira Regal. Uh, I spell it though. Oh yeah, T I S H E R A R E G E L L. All right, yep. Mr. J Hill, a conversation with Tashira Regal, episode zero zero six. Wante Base God, my guy, built to be friend. <laughs> it's a wrap. We out.